Will you say a prayer, mon cher frère? Sylvie eyed, Bay Francaise warily as she clutched the Pandora's case. That the canoe will not sink? Blue chuckled, then grew serious. Not on my watch, ma chère sœur. He seemed to take extra care as he secured Madame's meticulously wrapped silk for the gown with all its embellishments at the canoe's bottom. Your talents are no longer secret. He studied her intently, as if reconciling his sister with that of a mantua maker. Soon every madame on both sides of the Missaguash River will be clamoring for your services, no? That would depend on the quality of this gown when I'm finished. She returned, sitting down in the canoe, yet still eyeing the water warily, as if it might rise up and consume the Pandora. To her dismay, the wind shifted, creating lacy swells that smacked the canoe's leeward side as they reached the midpoint of the bay. Always chary of the water even on the best of days, Sylvie held the Pandora as she would a newborn baby. Cold, bit her nose and cheeks, her scarf loose about her head, Bleu paddled furiously, as if evading some unseen danger, his beaver hat pulled low against the fretful wind. It seemed odd to return without a stack of government-issued cloth for officers' shirts. Who would assume the task in her absence? Granted, there were new people moving in and out of the fort every day with a variety of skills, she wouldn't give herself airs and imagine she alone could ply a needle. Still, Madame's regard warmed her, even as the weather worked to turn her to ice. Once blessedly beached and out of the boat, Sylvie all but ran toward their front door, while Bleu stowed the canoe and unloaded cargo. Never had she been so glad to be home. She spied Marie Madeleine watching from the window as the setting sun stole the last of daylight, ending their eventful day. She was unprepared for the questions certain to pepper her from all sides once she crossed the threshold.